All right, coming up on this special edition of Hot Takes, we're gonna take a look at diversity in Star Wars and more specifically, The Mandalorian. Okay, okay. this is not a touchy subject at all. I'm no. sure this will be super easy to flow through. <laughs> Okay, so from the outset, yes, we are two white males. Yeah, we are and, definitely two dudes. Yeah. So probably grossly unqualified to yeah, have this discussion. And uneducated and yes, yeah, so all those disclaimers out of the way. Well hold on though, yeah. in our in our defense, before we got onto this video, we did consult uh, my wife who is the uh, person back there rocking the camera. So we have cleared all of what we're about to say with her, and she's like Mediterranean, so it's kind of diverse. But considering this is unscripted, it could go off the rails. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, okay, so... So anyone who's ever gone down, you know, the toxic rabbit hole on Twitter or any other social media platforms, it's become clear in recent years that there's obviously been a lack of diversity. Well, I, I could be wrong, but I believe uh, diversity is an old, old wooden ship that was used during the Civil War era. In big blockbusters, pop culture movies, and especially Star Wars. Yep. And on top of that, um, studios have been making an effort to try to add that into pictures. And rightfully so. Yes, ex Absolutely exactly so. so. It was you know? long over. It, it was definitely, yeah. definitely needed. Yep. So the problem is, if you go down these kind of toxic rabbit holes, is a lot of these studios haven't quite mastered how to do this seamlessly with trying to build strong characters rather than forcing it. Yeah, I think would be the fair. Yeah, a, a lot of times it's but as subtle as a 10 car pileup. And yeah. I think um, just to kind of skip into the meat of this topic, yeah. we're really going to compare two very large scale moments. Yes. Uh, one in a movie, one on a show. But I mean, you can argue that Mandalorian's better than yeah. Most of the Star Wars movies, put period. all the chapters together. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to discuss uh, two very specific moments, and ironically, the same person, if I'm not mistaken, was directly or indirectly involved with both, as Favreau was very heavily involved oh, in the Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe. So this is a very, very interesting comparison. So I'll frame uh, the part I'm going to go into Marvel because yeah. uh, you did it so well with the Mandalorian. Yeah. So. In the last two movies of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you had Infinity War and you had Endgame. Uh, in Infinity War, you could see that first not-so-subtle move to a very uh, female-empowering moment uh, during the battle uh, that was on uh, Wakanda. And then in Endgame, in that final big mass battle scene, uh, after Captain Marvel shows up, there is very much... Uh, a moment of all female momentum where you have your Scarlet Witch, you have Captain Marvel, you have the Valkyrie, you have liter you have rescue, you have everybody leading the charge to help um, help bring the gauntlet to a specific area. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, that was not done very subtly. Like there is a very pronounced moment. I'm not gonna say it was awkward. It's a, it's still it's a cool moment. No doubt. It's just when you see no it, doubt. you it felt forced. It, yeah, you register there is an agenda behind it. It's it's yeah, it's being forced it, into that moment. It felt yeah. forced and in their defense because the MCU is so big, getting all of these characters to interact in that type of environment mm -hmm. had obviously never been done. They have a moment where they're all together, and again, it's not that it's not well done, it's brilliantly well done, but it is a little forced. Yeah. And conversely, you and I were talking about The Mandalorian, and you shared something with me when you watched it here that you didn't even pick up until you got home, if you wouldn't mind sharing it. Yeah, so everyone, if you've seen The Mandalorian finale, obviously it's awesome. Everyone's been raving about it. Yep. I haven't heard a complaint or anything, you know, negative, really. Like, I think the only negative thing is the potential CGI on Mark Hamill. I was going to go um, Bo-Katan Darksaber. Oh, Bo -Katan. Bo -Katan. Yeah, yeah, so um, I watched it, and me and Ged did a review, called it the greatest 46 minutes possibly in Star Wars history. It was that good. Still agree. Yeah, I went home that night, watched it with my wife, and after it, she says to me, she's like, oh, she's like, that, that, that was pretty cool that uh, all the female characters teamed up to take over the light cruiser. And I literally looked and I thought about it and I hadn't even realized that it happened. And I think it goes to show you how masterfully 
you know, John Favreau and Dave Filoni have developed these characters from the beginning. They've established, you know, their roles. How know. in sync they are. How, yeah. how how well they flow together in that particular yeah. scene. And their and their characters are what we expected, right? When you get Bo Katan, we've already have her from the Clone Wars. We're expecting her to be lethal, you know, very, you know, have her own agenda, you know, be her own boss. Like, and that's what we got on screen. You know, Ahsoka was portrayed perfectly. Like all these characters mm -hmm. were kind of you, you don't even think twice because it's how they're a character, and that's how they we've if they were previously there, that's how we've known them. And if they're new, they were further developed and to be these awesome characters. And it culminates on, you know, Mando goes his own way separately. Boba Fett leaves on Slave One. Yep. So you're left with uh, um, Cara Dune, Bo-Katan. Well, Fennec. And yeah. Fennec was Sasha Banks' character's I name is. I forget Costa, it. Uh, Costa Reeves. Stuff with the four of them taking over, you know, causing the distraction and taking over the bridge on the Darksaber. So you got it an all-female team up of all these characters Mando's have met and mm -hmm. that's the crew he chose to take with them in you know the biggest mission so far in the Mandalorian to get back the child you just said something and I've been racking my brain since we started talking about the idea of doing this video because obviously there was a lot of pre-discussion in this one because you don't want to go down a toxic rabbit hole yeah. but you just brought something that kind of gave me a bit of an aha moment I think the main difference between this and what happened in the MCU, and I'll be curious to see if I get a, a, a nod from <laughs> our viewer over there, is that in Star Wars, all of these characters had one thing in common, and that was the relationship to one individual, which was the Mandalorian. Yeah. When you look at Marvel, Marvel is a collection of a whole bunch of individuals. That's it. Yeah. I think the fact that each has their own relationship in history that we've all got to watch the Mandalorian depicts them as characters and has nothing to do with their gender. Does that does that make sense? And I say yeah. that in a very positive way. Cara Dune is Cara Dune. Fennec is Fennec. We saw the history of that and how yeah. she's left on Tatooine. Cara Dune, we see when he goes to the that planet yeah, the and meets episode, and, yeah. and meets her the yeah, you know, the the sanctuary. You've got Bo Katan, which has her own history. That's been introduced. They're all developed as their own personalities as they relate to the Mando. Yeah. Whereas a lot of other Hollywood studios who are all trying to figure this out, and again, very positive, needs to be done. Yeah, I absolutely think it's a great idea. But I think what everybody's been missing is there isn't that that thing, that person that brings them all together. And I think that the MCU is almost doomed before it began because it's so big, there's nothing that could bring them all together yeah. unless they had all slept with Tony Stark. Yeah. Uh, like, like there was nothing that yeah. brought them together. Whereas in the Mandalorian, they were all linked to Mando and the child. Yeah. And I think that when you start yeah. seeing that depth of character, the character development, how those relationships grow, it, it, it doesn't matter what their physical appearance is. Yeah, and they all have their established plot threads, to your point, right? Like, Bo-Katan wants to get the Darksaber from Moff Gideon. Yep. She makes sense to be on the mission. Cara Dune loves the child, owes Mando, Big wants time. to be on the mission, and with the former Rebel Shark Trooper, wants to get Moff Gideon. Yep. Makes sense. You know, Koska Reeves is Bo-Katan's number two, it looks like. Yep. Coming with her. Um, and Fennec Shan, you know, pledged her and Boba's help to bring back the child. Like it, that's because the of the return of the yeah. because of the return of the armor. Yeah. If there's yep. anyone else in that situation, it actually would have made less sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I guess just to just sum it up, like massive hat tip. Yeah. Bravo, John Favreau and yep. Dave Filoni for seamlessly weaving some more diversity into Star Wars and. Doing it well and not having anyone notice, yeah, really, and and that I mean that as the biggest compliment. Goodness, yeah. yeah, 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 because it is. It's such a strong move, and we all know, not that we want to dive into this hole, that that there has been a a gap, a gap in Hollywood and in massive cinema. And I applaud even the people that are not doing it well, and even my my shop to the the, the MCU isn't a chirp. I mean, that is. I mean, we had conversations before even doing this quick shoot i mean this is a very delicate topic and i applaud people that are trying to do it properly yeah. so please keep it up and again to the mandalorian man you guys did an unbelievable job with it yeah the new gold standard um, absolutely yeah. all right that's it so this is our quick hot take yeah 
Um, yeah, so if you agree with us, hop in the comments, let us know. Let us know if you have any other takes, and uh, please keep it civil. Yeah, zero toxicity allowed. Yeah. Tyler Rogue Leader, Get from Fabulous Flicks. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you are doing with your life, uh, but please like and don't be afraid to comment. Cheers. Bye.